Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Yesterday, I produced a, a video on this channel uh, about how we handle uh, cleaning up social media photographs and so forth that are on social media. And since that video, I've been in prayer about a few things, and I thought to to address how it is that Christians address previous mistakes, because it's um, we live in a time where our past is readily available to people, whether we delete social media posts or not, because the, the various government systems that are in league with Google and the internet have uh, been gathering our data for years. and. So I thought to do a video about how to handle our previous mistakes and also how we as Christians conduct ourselves. The first thing I, I want to say about this is that we do know that God will hold us accountable for what we have done in our lives. And when we come to the waters of baptism, the sins that are past are remitted, but we are still responsible thereafter to walk in holiness. And if we sin or we falter, we fail, we stumble in some way thereafter, then we can trust that Jesus Christ is able to forgive us. He's willing to forgive us if we repent before the throne. So in First John chapter 1, I believe it's verse 9, but it, let me just check to make sure I've got that right. Uh, so in First John, chapter 1 and yes in verse 9 I'll read that for you it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness there is a phenomenon though and this is something I really want to address to you my sisters because it's very important that we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling and that we take heed unto ourselves because what someone else has done and whatever someone else's sin is, we as Christians would want them to, to repent of that and to seek the Lord about it. And we are not God. You know, a lot of what I talk about on this channel revolves around the idea that there is one God and one mediator between God and men. And indeed, there is one God, and guess what? It's not you. It's not me. We are people. We are people. We are of mankind. And we are not God, and we are not Jesus Christ either. So it does not pertain to us in this time. In this time, it does not pertain to us to go around exacting retribution on people because we think that they have sinned. Nor, nor is it their job to go around exacting retribution upon us for things that exist in our past. You know, when Mary, the sister of Lazarus, anointed Jesus Christ with her tears and with precious ointment, there were religious hypocrites standing all around her who said things like, if he knew what manner of woman that was, he wouldn't let her do that. And so one thing I want to say is that we were all that manner of woman. Every single one of us, no matter what our sin was. And there are many sins that, that can condemn a person to hell. And there is not one human being who's ever been born other than the Lord Jesus Christ who is not guilty of sin. And so in the world, in the world, they keep track of what you have said and done so that they can resurrect those things that you have had remitted in the waters of baptism later. So perhaps you are on social media posing in a, a uh, bikini, for example, and try as you might to remove that from social media. The enemy still has it, and the enemy might try to use it, so we want to be prepared. When we are a Christian. We recognize that there are many people who are going to accuse us. 
They might accuse us of something that is untrue, or they might accuse us of something that is true. Even after we're a Christian, we can make a mistake. And so I want to point out a mistake that I have made recently. I believe it was yesterday I did a video where I was wearing a uh, black, I did a couple of videos where I was wearing a black and white scarf that, that I had no awareness had certain associations with it, or that it was a pattern that in the Arab world pertains only to men. I had no idea that that was the case. And I wore it, and I wore it with something else tied over it, as I usually wear my headscarves. But still, I was wearing this kind of scarf, and I forget exactly now what it's called, and it doesn't matter what it's called. But a sister wrote to me and pointed out what that is, and, and that, and she corrected me, and I'm very grateful for that. So I was unaware that that had associations with things that are sometimes violent, that it pertained to Arab men or sometimes Jewish men to wear that particular pattern. I, I didn't know that, and it's never my desire to cause anyone to stumble. But that was a mistake, and verily, I'm not going to repeat it. But I'm also not going to remove the video, and I'm not going to uh, worry about it if someone wants to levy an accusation against me, because there's a lot of religious people, and I'm particularly talking about people in the denominations right now. People in the denominations are very fault-finding, and they like to accuse, and that's one way that we can recognize the false church, the false seed versus the true seed. As Christians, we love one another. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ said, they shall know you by your love for one another. In the Word of God, we read something, and this is very clear here, and I want to really emphasize this because we want to take heed to ourselves and our conduct because that spirit of accusation is the spirit of Antichrist. It's the spirit of Judas. Judas also was present when Mary, the sister of Lazarus, anointed the feet of Jesus Christ, and he thought that it was a waste of money he thought it was a waste of money, and at that point, he decided to go to the religious rulers and form a plot to betray the Lord. So the spirit of accusation, of looking at someone else and judging their walk, is something that we want to root out of our hearts. And verily, it can exist in a Christian's heart. We can see it, and when we see it, we can repent of it. So I am not saying that if someone has this condition of heart, that they're antichrist. I'm saying that we have all come out of the false religion. We have all come out of the world. There might exist something in our heart that the Lord would like to clean up. And we know that the water, it, the water that we are washed by is the word of God. The word of God is not water. It washes us like water does, just like a little baby gets dirty when it goes out and plays in the sand or something. The mama will give that baby a bath. So Jesus Christ washes us when we become a Christian, when we continue in his word and do what the word of God says. Once we, come, we become a Christian, however, it is not an excuse for us now to go around pointing out people's faults. If someone is a young Christian and they're doing that, uh, those of us who are walking with the Lord will do our very best to recognize that we were once that way ourselves. We were once looking at others, you know, and this is common in a new Christian. So I know for, for myself, when I was a new Christian, for a while in the beginning, when I looked at people in the world, I felt some degree of contempt for, for their sin. And it's, it's okay to have contempt for sin, but not to be haughty and proud when dealing with people in the world. We want to be very careful. We want to take heed to ourselves and examine our hearts daily to see what manner of spirit we are of. So I want to read now in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 21 the truth about this. So we read in verse 20, if a man say, I love God, 
and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. In the story of the Good Samaritan, which Jesus told, there was someone who had been robbed and beaten up and left by the wayside on the road. And the religious people walked by that man and had contempt for him. They didn't want anything to do with this person who was beat up and filthy and left, left for dead. But the Samaritan, who is not a Jew, walked by... A, Samaritans were people who were part Jewish and part mixed with the heathen, for, for those of you who don't know. So the Samaritan was walking by this man, and he bound up his wounds and brought him to a place and cared for him, and then paid someone to continue to care for him. And this is what we as Christians do. So we don't look at other people's faults and failings and feel haughty about it. Verily, the word of God says that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So we want to take care to examine ourselves and see what manner of spirit we are of. Nine, I want to read a portion of uh, the, the life of Jesus Christ as written in this gospel according to Luke. And in, it's uh, Luke chapter 9, and I want to begin in verse 54. This is a story where Jesus Christ was planning to go to a certain place for the night, and they didn't want him to come. And then we read what happened. And then when his disciples saw, and pardon me, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Throughout the word of God, it is written over and over and over again that God is a merciful God. It is also written in the New Testament, particularly when Jesus Christ was speaking to people about forgiveness and loving one's enemies. That it's the commandment unto God's people is to be merciful as God is merciful. And it is not for us to go around being um, vengeful on people for their sins. Rather, when someone has harmed us, we are commanded to pray for them. Let's go to Jude 21. Jude 21. Don't ask me what chapter, because there's only one chapter in Jude. So in Jude 21, let's read here. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion making a difference, and others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. So when we see someone in a sin, what do we do? Some of them we have compassion making a difference, and some of them we might pluck from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. But we do not exalt ourselves to be as God, and we don't we don't condemn people. That is a matter for God to decide. It is not for us to do. So the first thing I would say is that when people bring up your past, when people accuse you of things that happened before and they're true, simply admit that. Say, yes, that's true. I did that. And that's an opportunity then 
to tes testify to that person about the mercy of God and what it is that you were saved from by Jesus Christ. Christians are not supposed to be going around acting all proud and self-righteous the way the Pharisees did. And when someone points out a mistake that we made in the past or that we've made recently, we don't, we don't react with defensiveness. We don't deny that it happened. We admit it if it's the case. And we humble ourselves and we say, thank you. Thank you, because what I want to talk to you about is the mercy of God. If the person accusing us is not a Christian, then we can tell them about the salvation of Jesus Christ. It's a perfect opportunity. If someone is a Christian and they're pointing out something that we have done after we became a Christian, then we can tell them thank you. We can say thank you. I'm going to seek the Lord about that. And I hear what you have said unto me and get on our knees and seek the Lord in prayer and say, Father, I have sinned. Please forgive me. When we perceive sin in others, if it's someone who's not a Christian, we would look upon that with long suffering and mercy the way God does, because it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Yes, we, the fear of the Lord is important. For people they need to fear God but we didn't fear God the minute we we sinned the first time we had to learn the hard way so we're patient with people we realize that they have their own path and they don't have to obey us we don't make our flesh the issue or our righteousness the issue and we don't correct people in pride rather when we encounter a sinner someone who isn't saved we would have compassion on them. We would be long-suffering with them. Why? Because God has been compassionate and long-suffering with us. We did not save ourselves. And while some of us were a little bit more righteous before salvation than others, there was not one of us that could have saved ourselves. And we need to keep that in mind. Now I want to uh, turn to Galatians 5. Galatians 5, and let's read here uh, verses 14 and 15. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed of one another. You see, when we see a brother or a sister falling, Maybe they're in sin. Maybe they're rebellious about something. Maybe they don't have an understanding that something is wrong. We want to be careful about the manner with which we approach that person. We want to speak the truth to them in love, not exalting ourselves, rather exalting Jesus Christ. And the best way to, to minister to people as Christian women is to manifest the mercy of God, not our own righteousness, not to be proud. So I want to turn now to um, 1 John again, and I'm going to close now. And basically what I would say is that it doesn't matter what people accuse us of. If they've accused us of something that is true, then we can admit that and use that as an opportunity either to minister about the mer to them about the mercy of God or to, to correct ourselves and to repent of something. And thereby we are an example both to the world and to the body of Christ that we are not anything. It's Jesus Christ who is our all in all. The other thing that we want to remember is that sometimes people will falsely accuse us. For example, the saint, the first saint ever to be murdered, Stephen, the first Christian saint to be martyred, prayed for those who were stoning him. Jesus Christ prayed for the people who were crucifying him. So when people accuse us falsely, then we can rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is our reward in heaven. That's what Jesus Christ said. So now I want to close in First John. And what I would add here is we don't want to become an accuser ourselves. So we want to be careful about that. We want to remember 
that just because we perceive sin to be on someone does not mean that we have a right to speak to them in such a way that will make that situation worse. We don't want to come at people with pride. We don't want to start doing research on people, trying to find out, try to discover, trying to discover some iniquity in them. Because one thing I can tell you, my sisters, is that if you're looking for fault in another, you will verily find it. But while you're doing that, you are blind to your own sin. And that kind of behavior is not pleasing unto the Lord. So this is a new Bible. I'm having a little bit of trouble finding things right away. So in 1 John, the pages are different. So in 1 John chapter 5, um, I want to, to read here starting in verse 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So God was in Christ, Jesus was in the Father, the Father was in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we, who are bought by his blood, who have been baptized in his name and received of his spirit, we are in him. This is eternal life. Now let's read in verse 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Idolatry is sometimes thought of a certain way. So people think idolatry is to bow down before a statue. But verily, idolatry is exalting anything to be in the place where only God can be. You see? So when we exalt ourselves to be as God and start condemning people, or when we, when we heed people who are exalting themselves to be as God, as if that mattered, because it doesn't. What matters is what God thinks of us. So we don't condemn people regardless of what they might do unto us, because we don't know the whole story. Only God knows their heart. And that is rarely true. That doesn't mean we give assent to sin or say that sin isn't sin. It means that it is not for us to condemn people. So I want to make sure that that's very clear. We still speak the truth to people about sin, but we do so with mercy and grace. We offer them the same kindness that was given unto us. When we do otherwise, we are exalting ourself, and this is a kind of idolatry. So I'm going to close with this idea that pride goeth before a fall and a haughty spirit before uh, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall god hates the proud in heart we don't want to fall into pride once we have attained salvation because verily that is something that would greatly displease our heavenly father after he sent his only begotten son to lay down his life for us, if we then uh, started going around exacting judgment upon others who harm us. This is very serious. To do so is idolatry. So pride, narcissism, self-righteousness, our hypocrisy and pride. So what I would say unto you, my sisters, is little children, keep yourselves from pride. May the Lord bless you. As you continue in the Word today, I look forward to hearing from you always. My email is in the description box below, or feel free to comment. May the Word of the Lord go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.